You've probably tried using image textures to make nice buildings or concrete like William Langren and Ian Hubert say to, right? But it never looked good, did it? Well, in this video, I'll walk you guys through the four steps that will transform your image texturing so you can make awesome concrete like this easily. I actually think I've discovered the exact formula to making image textures look good, especially the last step. So make sure you stick around. Let's get into it. Wait, before we get into all the texturing, I just want to let you guys know that in the Google Drive link below, I've given you guys access to the blend file with a concrete wall that I modeled for this tutorial so you can get straight to texturing. And I also created my own graffiti and sign and sticker overlay that you can add onto your textures that's there as well. More on how to use this later in the video. And there's also a blend file called Auto Sticker. So this guy called Daviator on Discord made it from these pictures that I took ages ago where you have this one face now that if you duplicate, it creates random variations from all these different stickers. So make sure you go and download all these things and there's more in the video later on on how to use them. So all I can ask is you just stick around, watch this video, like and subscribe, and yeah, let's get into the texturing. Tip number one, use other image textures to add extra realism, variation, and a crap ton of grunge. So I've got a basic image texture set up here, you know, I think everyone's done this before. The colors plugged into the bump, into the normal, into the roughness, and into the color. It's just this picture over here. Now it looks fine, the bump's a little bit intense, and the reflections are kind of boring. So we're gonna fix that using other image textures. Let's start off with base color. Now you might think the color is fine right now, just plugging it straight in, but trust me, adding some variation in the color is something that not many people do, but it helps so much. We'll just duplicate this image here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix these together to act as a factor for another mix node. Now if that sounds complicated, don't worry, I'm just gonna walk through it right now. If we just control shift, right click and drag over this one with the node wrangle add-on enabled, it'll mix them together. Now I'm just gonna turn off this bump. I'm gonna change this blending mode from mix here to overlay. Now these blending modes are awesome. We're gonna use them a lot in this tutorial. We'll have a look at this result as we drive up this factor. You can see it's just putting in more of this picture over the top of this one. It's looking fine, it's adding a bit more grunge, but we want some variations. So we're gonna use a color ramp. So I'm just gonna add in a color ramp here. Now you might have noticed I added that in super quickly. That's because I've added a shortcut. So if you just go Shift A, Converter, and go to color ramp, you can right click and assign shortcut and just use Control R. Now let's preview this. And for this one, we want high contrast. We kinda wanna pick out these grungy bits here. Pull those blacks and those whites closer together. Then we're just gonna duplicate this and use it for the top one. But we want less contrast for this one. So we're gonna even pull this black up a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. And let's have a look at the overlay result. Sick, we're getting some good grunge from this one here. But we're also mixing it in with the gray of this top one, which makes a nice variation. We're gonna add in another mix color node here, preview that. And now we wanna use this result as the factor. And we wanna use this base color here as color A. So we're gonna use this mixture of pictures as the factor to control where this color goes. So for example, if we put this to red, you can see it's putting that color depending on where these like values are. And of course, we're gonna add in another color ramp here before we go into the factor to just pull these values a bit closer and add some more contrast. And we don't want red, so we're gonna just eye pick color in here, maybe this gray, and we're gonna add in a lighter color because we're imagining it's almost like dust that's settled on this concrete. Awesome, so we've added in a lighter color, now we want a darker color. So for that, I'm gonna use our third concrete image and mix that one in with our base image. We'll change this to, let's just try screen. The best way to find out what blending modes work is honestly just to try them. Now, actually, instead of using our base color, let's use the results from mixing these two pictures together as our like base color, but more like a matte for where we want the darker color. That's looking suitably grungy. Now let's add in a color ramp, plug that in there, and let's have a preview of this. And what we want to do here is we want to isolate these cracks. We're imagining that the dirt and the darker colors are settling into these cracks here. So we just want to isolate that by bringing the white up. Looks great to me. Now we can add in another mix color node and use this color ramp as the factor for, let's say, multiplying in a kind of saturated brown. So this is doing the complete opposite what we want it to do. It's saying where this white is, let's put this brown. So actually what we want to do is to just use an invert color. Perfect. Now we've got that dark color in the cracks. We just turn that node on and off 
you can see how much life that adds to the texture. Six, so colors done, we just added in a bit of light variation and dark variation, simple, easy. Now for roughness, we can actually use this value from our uh, mix here and just chuck that in a color ramp, plug that in the factor there, plug that in the roughness. And now that's probably gonna be way too shiny for a uh, concrete. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change this black value here and move it up to like, let's say 0.45. We want it to be super like nearly white. We can bring this white up. We don't want too much contrast. This could even be a little bit higher. Yeah, that's nice. Now let's have a look at the principal BSDF. Yeah, those are the kind of reflections we're getting. Looks a lot more like concrete. Now your reflections might be a bit brighter. Yours is probably at 0.5 right now. And if you don't know what specular is, it's kind of just how bright the reflections are and like how much light it absorbs and reflects. So if we put that to one, the reflections are gonna be super bright. But if we put that to zero, it's gonna have zero reflections at all. So we want that quite low because concrete doesn't reflect super brightly. And if we want to, we can even plug this color from our roughness into the specularity to add even more variation to the reflections. And lastly, we have bump. Now bump's an interesting one because you don't want too much because otherwise it'll just look really weird and pixelated, but you don't want none at all because then it'll just look flat. So what we're gonna do is actually a tip that I learned from William Langren in his Making Realistic Concrete video. If we move this strength down, it's decreasing the shadows, which isn't realistic at all. What we wanna do is we wanna actually decrease this distance to something like 0.005. There we go, the bump is actually looking nicer and not so harsh anymore. And now very simply, we can mix in this uh, second picture here. We can just duplicate the bump. We just make a chain of them because that's kind of how you mix bumps. So what we can do is just grab this color from our variation image, plug that into the height of this one and have a look at the difference between the two. So we have this here, just adding a little bit of extra bump on top. Awesome, so with tip one, we've added some variation to color, roughness, specularity, and bump. Pretty simple and easy, and it adds a lot more life to your texture. Now tip two is simple. It's just using a noise texture to break up your base image and another procedural thing that you can easily control to add some more detail. So with our noise texture setup, which is just super simple, you know, mapping, texture, coordinate, and a color ramp, we're actually gonna improve this bump. So you see this like uh, variation here that is good because it breaks up the flat plane, but it's just too pixelated for my liking and the because the image isn't high enough quality. We're gonna replace that with a noise texture because it, it is procedural, so technically it's kind of infinite. However, we don't wanna get rid of the bump that's from our original base image. So we're just going to add a color ramp before the height. I'm gonna crank this up so we only get the values in the cracks because that's like specific to the image. We can even go harder here. Yeah, that's perfect, perfect. Then we're gonna add in another bump node in this chain here, preview that, and then we're gonna grab this color from our color ramp into the height of this one. And you can see that's already adding some nice bump on top, but we wanna change the scale here. So we wanna bring that up to like 50. 50 looks about right. We can bring that detail, maybe that roughness up. And let's just have a play with a color ramp here. If we just reset the color ramp here and just bring that white up just a little bit, let's just see how that looks. Just turn up the distance here to show you guys the effect. But we're kind of getting that same thing bef from before without the pixelation. Maybe we can even have a higher distance on this one. 0.01 seems good, just so that our reflections are broken up a bit. Now this tip is simple, but now that you understand you like, you know, using noise textures to break up things, you can kind of just grab this setup and duplicate it and put it in the color thing or put it in roughness just to add some more variation because that's how you make good textures, variation. The last tip in the shader editor here is to utilize these three nodes. They both do kind of different but similar things. So I'll just walk you through them here. So I've just gone and grabbed my cube here, which actually has some uh, variation in the geometry. And then I can actually show you guys when you use the bevel node and the geometry node with the normal output and you add in a vector math node and you just change this to dot product. If you just combine these two, you now have a really nice mask of your edges, which you can use to drive the factor of a mix shader. So if we just use this value into our factor and what we want to do is invert that value because right now it's doing the opposite of what we want. So now we can put the color in here. If we just duplicate our principal BSDF, we don't have to do anything fancy at all because we're not going to really see it. If we just drag this color to darkish, kind of brownish, don't go too hard on the saturation, bring the roughness up, make sure the specular's down and chuck that BSDF in the bottom here. 
Now you can see that's actually gonna be put in the cracks here. For example, we now have red in there. We've got extra grunge in our cracks. Now the ambient occlusion node is really the same thing. It finds where like edges and faces are near each other and creates a mask. The benefit of using an ambient occlusion node is it can actually tell where other objects are in relation to yours. So if we have this plane here, maybe we just bring that up just to show you guys and we use a color ramp to drive that ambient occlusion harder. If we just drive this black up, you can see we're getting a gradient from black to white, which is showing us that this object is close to another object in this area. And to stop that, if you want, you can turn on only local and it will only count like the cracks from your own model. So these three nodes are really cool for adding some extra grunge and dirt where other models might be near yours or where there's cracks in yours. And it's just, yeah, really cool to add some dirt in there. And we can even use tip two in tip three to mix in a noise texture with the output from our ambient occlusion. So now we have some sick dirt where this plane is and if we move it away, you can see it disappears and it comes up as we move our plane. And if that's a little bit too much for you, you can just bring the white up and now it's only at the very bottom here. If you use these three tips here, next time you texture something, whether you're using image textures or PBR textures, I promise it'll look so much better. So now let's get to the final tip that is so helpful and it isn't actually in the shader editor. My last tip is to add decorations on top. Things like pictures of grunge, decals, trash, graffiti, stickers, all that kind of stuff. I'll dive into it here. I'll just start off with the decals. So if you don't know what decals are, they're basically just a plane with an image on top of it with an alpha. So you just get like this, for example, the moss or the grunge out of the picture. Now you can get your own decals by going to textures.com, downloading pictures and importing it in. But I actually have a blend file linked below that you can download that has all of these pictures I've used here marked as assets. So all you have to do is do the whole asset browser thing and then you'll just be able to drag and drop them straight in, rotate them up and then if you just go G, Y to move on to your thing, and if you make sure that your snap is snap face project, if you just hold control, it'll kind of just align it in here, and then you just drag it out a little bit so it's not fully clipping, and you've added a decal on top. These decals are awesome, and I've added two of these huge leaking gunks up the top to just add some like drip to the concrete, and it looks so cool. Uh, another tip I would have when you use these decals is you can actually use a color ramp before the alpha to crunch it. And if you just move this white down in value, it won't be purely opaque. It'll be a little bit see-through still so that you don't get like the full effect because it can be too much sometimes. And you can see how much these decals add already. And all I've done is just dragged and dropped in a couple. They just help to break up the texture so, you know, the viewer's eye doesn't see the same repeating image over and over. It helps to break up the light as well and it just looks more real and like people have actually been here before. Next, you have graffiti and signs, one of my favorite things to add to textures. Now, a couple of these graffiti pieces here I got from William Langren's Patreon, which I would definitely recommend if you can spare the cash. However, I wanted to help you guys out and give you a free asset, so I created my own graffiti and stickers overlay here if I can find it. Here's the image overlay I made. There'll be a link in the description to download it. So yeah, this is pretty cool. It's just some pictures from textures.com. So if you just do the same technique as before and chuck that on the wall, it looks pretty damn cool. Another hot tip that you really wanna do is if you go into the object settings of this, you wanna to go to visibility, ray visibility, and you wanna turn off shadow. Because if this really is graffiti and signs like, you know, stuck on the wall. You don't want it like displaying shadows on the wall because you're not going to be able to get it perfectly in line. So you just want to turn off shadows completely for all your, you know, overlays and whatever. Yes, it's me from the future and I'm here to tell you guys how to use the auto sticker thing. So I've got a new Blender file open with my concrete in it and I'm just going to go to file, append and locate where I've saved the blend file that's in the description in the Google Drive. So once you find it, you just want to double click and you want to go to object and then you just want to go the auto sticker and hit append. You just do the old snapping trick we did before to get it on our concrete. Make sure your visibility is off for the shadows. You can see we have our sticker, but now what's so special about it? Now, if I duplicate this around and keep it on shift Y, you can see I've got another sticker already. And I can do that again and again, and you can do this for a long time because you can see down here, these are all the different stickers that we have available. It's just really cool. And I'm thank you so much again for Daviator for making this. The cool thing with these overlays is they're literally four vertices and you can just go in, grab your knife tool with K and maybe just cut out this sign because you don't want it or you want it in another place. Just hit enter 
grab this face, you can just press uh, P and separate by selection. Now, if we go back into object mode, we can just drag this over here. And now we have this sign by itself. It's also in the shader editor, which means you can add in mix RGB, I mean, a mix color, and you can mix in like maybe a blue because you want a blue look in your scene. It's so customizable, easy to drag and drop. It just makes things real. Lastly, we have trash specifically for the ground. To get this trash here, I'm just using my add-on trashed and I'm not trying to sell you it or anything. It's just an easy way to add in trash. So I'm just using it right now. You can literally go to textures.com, download some pictures of cigarettes and whatever and model it yourself. It's like the overlays. It's just breaks up the way the light bounces off these reflections. It adds some more depth to your scene and it makes it look like people have, you know, walked here before. So yeah, those are the four ways to level up your image texturing and texturing game in general. Hope it helped and I hope you actually get to make something cool with this. Make sure to like and subscribe. Oh, and also in the comments, let me know if you guys like this kind of video and want to see more step-by-step -step how to improve certain things. And you know, keep going with Blender. You got this.